All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get started with our guest speakers from Nova Cards, student Dr. Jordan and Charbel. If you guys could brief, uh, give us a uh, brief understanding of what you're doing and how we can use that for step one in CK Prep. <clears throat> All right, I'll, uh, I'll get started here. So my name is Jordan. I am a student doctor at University of Virginia um, in Virginia. <laughs> And um, so, yeah, I think, so I'll, I'll give you a brief walkthrough of what Nova Cards does. Um, I should say before I get started, as most of um, you are international medical students, this I think could be particularly helpful for you. Um, Nova Cards is a lot about aligning, uh, figuring out exactly what the stuff that you're learning in lecture, what of that is important for step one and what isn't. So I think this could be, um, this could be pretty helpful. So let us know. And then also Charbel, I don't know if you wanna say hi really fast before we, Hey everybody, uh, my name is Charbel Marche. I'm a third year medical student at the University of Virginia, just like Jordan. Um, and I'm excited to share Nova Cards with you guys. Yeah, so I'll uh, share my screen here. Share, okay. So um, this is Nova Cards as it is right now. Um, you, everyone can go to it. It's, it's completely free to use right now. Um, so the website is novacards.ai. You can go there if you want, or you can just uh, watch this, this walkthrough. So you can see here, it says instantly find Anki flashcards. And that's the, the main thing that Nova Cards does at this point in time. So the idea came to us, um, Charbel and our other co-founder, Shane and I, uh, both like the Anking flashcard deck. It's a very popular flashcard deck that covers step one. Um, and it's for those of you who study with the Anki uh, flashcard program, which is also very popular. But one thing we realized is there's like 30,000 flashcards that cover step one, which is an astronomical amount. It's, it's kind of overwhelming, right? Um, and the big issue that we had was we wanted to use these flashcards because they were um, well-made. It was a lot faster to use pre-made flashcards than to make your own. But it took so long to find um, flashcards that were relevant to whatever lecture you were studying that day that it kind of almost defeated the purpose of having pre-made flashcards. So... I mean, I was spending like an hour a day looking for exactly the right flashcards that matched up with exactly which part of the lecture. And it just, it just took so long. So um, uh, we, came, we realized that this is like an issue that could pretty easily be solved with computers. And uh, our other co-founder, Shane, is a whiz at artificial intelligence. And he wrote some programs that basically help you find exactly which flashcards are relevant to um, your studies. So. Um, when you get to the Nova Cards homepage, you can click on how it works if you'd like. That just takes you to learn more about the details of Nova Cards. Oops, let's go for it here. Um, but if you're just going to use the app, click I know what to do. You're going to come to this page. Um, so the key is that you input any sort of medical text that you want to find flashcards for. So it can be a textbook chapter, it can be a PowerPoint, it can be a transcript from a video, it could be notes that you took, whatever it is. Um, so let's say that I'm learning about Wilson's disease. So let's see if I can highlight this text. I'm learning all this stuff about Wilson's disease. So I copy it. And then I paste it into Nova Cards. And then I click Find Cards. And then it's gonna take a couple minutes to look through the flashcards for you. Um, it has to do a lot of fancy math, so this can take a little bit of time, but uh, a good tip if, if you think it takes a little too long is to put in chunks of text that are a little more focused, so only learn about Wilson's disease rather than all the diseases of um, the liver. Okay, so it searches through the entire On King deck, and it's going to pull up these 50 flashcards. You tell it how many flashcards you want to find, so you can look through them, and you can say, okay, this flashcard's about Wilson's disease. That's the, that's one I want. Um, these are all pretty irrelevant. Okay, asterixis, that's like only moderately relevant. Let's say I don't like it. I can click this X right here and it gets rid of it for me. Um, let's say I don't, wanna, I don't want this flashcards. You can go through it and find whatever flashcards you think are the most relevant. Then once you do, so the way, click here to copy the flashcards and then you paste them into your um, browser in, in the Anki app up for you really fast and it'll uh it'll find exactly the flashcards in your Anki app another thing if you prefer studying with tags let's go to the tags right here it pulls up highly relevant um tags from the Anki deck as well so this this is kind of nice if you're afraid that um 
you, you want to be a little more thorough maybe than exactly what your lecture has covered. So you could go, let's say, okay, there's a sketchy video that's really relevant about Wilson's disease. I can just copy this entire tag and find those, those cards in, in Anki as well. So I, if you remember, I copied the cards. So I just go to the browse tab right here and I paste it in. Then I search and it pulls up exactly the relevant cards um, for Wilson's disease. So this process, if, if you all are familiar, can take a really long time if you're doing it by hand, um, but hopefully Nova cards uh, will save you some time. So um, Tabby, I have a little bit more time, right? Can I, can I talk a little bit more? Yes, absolutely. You're welcome. Cool. So, um, let's here. So we uh, we want to show you a little bit of the future of Nova Cards. So right now it finds flashcards, but it's going to do a lot, a lot more than that very soon. Um, and what in particular we want to, to be able to do is anything that artificial intelligence can do um, that will save you time as a student. We want Nova Cards to do it for you, um, so that you can spend as much time as you need actually studying or doing other things like taking care of yourself, spending time with family, doing research, whatever you want. So this is a little preview. This is something we, we it's almost ready. We, we thought it might be ready by the time we gave this presentation, but it's not quite ready. So here's the new Nova cards. Um, you, you notice here it says find and make cards instead of just finding cards. So let's paste, oops, let's paste that text about Wilson's disease in there. Oops. Okay, so here's the text about Wilson's disease. Let it think for a little bit. Okay, so here's, this is the sim a similar page to what you saw before. It's all your flashcards and all the relevant ones that you'd like. Um, it has the tags page as before, but now it has a new tab called cards made. So this is exactly the text that you entered right here. Uh, you can click on individual sentences and see which cards are relevant, like uh, aligned with each sentence in the text that you submitted. Um, if you see a, text or a sentence that's highlighted in yellow, that's a, uh, a sentence that doesn't have any associated flashcards, but um, our algorithm has determined that's not a good one to make flashcards with. Um, this actually, this sentence seems okay. We're still working on tuning that algorithm a little bit, but here's, a, here's something that's really cool. So you see these red sentences. These are sentences that don't have any associated flashcards, um, but we think they would make good flashcards. So if you click on it, you can see that it suggests a flashcard right here. So it's automatically made flashcards for you from your notes. So this is something that is not covered in step one, not covered in Anki, but is still being taught to you by your lecturer or whatever, um, wherever you're getting your medical text from. So what you can do is you can scroll down and you can actually um, download the flashcards that Nova Cards made for you and uh, open them and it pulls it right into your Anki. You can start studying. So the new version of Nova Cards will not only just show you what is exactly covered by step one in your lecture, but will make flashcards for everything that's not covered for you. Um, and you're, oh, I didn't mention this as well. If you don't like the flashcard that Nova Cards made you, you can edit it yourself. So let's say, um, let's say you don't think this is a good closed deletion. You can just get rid of that. Whatever you want, you can edit it and then you can save it. And um, so it's, it just makes making flashcards way faster. And it tells you exactly what's covered by step one and what isn't, which I think is very relevant for people uh, studying in other countries, especially that want to get ready for US boards. So, so that's a brief introduction of Nova Cards. Charbel, do you have any um, anything to add about that? No, I think you're really thorough. Um, a lot's coming in the works. We're thinking about adding in uh, potential practice questions to go with the notes that you upload. Uh, that's definitely down the pipeline, but just keep your eyes open. Yeah, and, and even more than that, um, the as you all probably know, AI is getting better and better. And so there's more and more things that we could do to save um, save medical students time. And medical students, as you all know, are very, very stressed and they have a lot on their plate. So anything we can do to save time um, is something that's, that I think would be helpful. So I, I do yeah. want to add as well um, that we will also be supporting uh, MCAT decks. So people who are studying for MCAT, people who are studying for step three or PA school. Um, so if you're not quite a med student, if you're uh, you know, just trying to study to get in and whatnot. Um, soon we'll have that deck up and you'll be able to, to work with those decks as well. Yeah, I forgot to add that. Let me show you, we have that functionality already here. So if you go to this uh, little hamburger menu, this is the advanced options. You, you can go to deck and you can change it from the Onking MCAT deck to the Onking step decks or the pants deck that's for PA school. 
Poop and Ruck at step three. So if you're studying for step three, you can also use Nova cards to do that. So it supports a lot of different things now, or it will very soon. All right, thank you so much. I really appreciate this presentation. And the response is very positive for this. So I believe Jordan and Charbel, we will be seeing more of you guys. If that Excellent. is something in your plans. Yeah, of course. So much. So a common question that we do have, um, Jordan and Charbel, is, all right, how do we start with this? I'm someone who's studying for step one, step two, most of the people in the audience. How should I approach this? Any guidance in that? Yeah, so let's say um, let's say you're a new medical student. What I would do, let, and let's say you're studying at an international school, what I would do is I would start uploading either my notes or my textbook chapters, whatever it is that your, whatever text that your school gives you to study with, I would upload that to Nova cards and start studying those cards, um, keep them in your deck because that's what's gonna be relevant for step one. Maybe your school, if your school is anything like our school in Virginia, they're gonna teach you stuff that's not on step one, just, I don't know, to torture you. Or I, don't, I don't really know why they do it. <laughs> they just, they, they give you extra stuff. And it's important to know that for your school's test, but it's much more important to know exactly what's on step one. So I would focus on that if, if I was especially an international medical student and uh, that will help you stay really well prepared for step one. Then you'll be able to crush it and, um, and then you'll be able to match your residency in the US and it'll be great, it'll be awesome. Great, thank you. One more question I have, Jordan. When we spoke, we, uh, we also talked about when you wanted to learn about a certain topic, you could filter out those um, cards or as you suggested that um, you can hide all the cards and take some out. If you could talk oh, yeah, a yeah. little bit more about that. Yes, so that's more of a feature of Anki itself. Um, would you mind if I shared my screen again? I think it'd be helpful Absolutely. if I did that. Okay. If something that's helpful, we're all for it. So these are the same cards that I found before about Wilson's disease. Um, oftentimes what will happen is students will go in, I'm not gonna do, I don't know what the best way for me to show you this is. They'll go in and they'll um, they'll have all of their cards um, uh, suspended like this. The way you do that is Command J on a Mac. Um, so they'll go in and they'll completely suspend the entire Onking deck. So if you look at this, you can click on the entire Onking deck and suspend the whole thing. Suspending isn't the same thing as deleting cards. It's kind of like putting them on pause. Um, so let's say that you did that. Um, but now you want to study the, these uh, cards right here. These are about Wilson's disease. You can go through and then you can unsuspend them. So you highlight the same cards again and click Command J and it unsuspends them and that makes them ready to study in your deck. So instead of, um, if you didn't suspend the cards first, you would just open your on and you have 30,000 flashcards to do, which is way too much for anyone to do, right? But if you suspend them all, you put them on pause and you only unsuspend them as, as time goes on. And Nova Cards is really good to help you find out exactly which cards to unsuspend rather than kind of looking through it just by yourself, uh, which takes a lot of time, so. All right, thank you so much for going through that. And I think what we need from you is we're gonna need another feature session where we talk a little bit more about how we're going to make this applicable for step one and step two takers. Yeah, of course. Sure. Right. Sure. Anything else that you would like to share? Well, you can um, follow us on Instagram. We're going to be releasing lots of updates. Um, a, a new, the one that we showed you will hopefully come out very soon. Um, and yeah, right. Currently, the app is free to use. Um, so go ahead and use it. And um, we also really appreciate any feedback. If there's any feature you can think of that would be helpful, there's feedback buttons on our webpage and let us know. And we're always, uh, we want to know how we can make it better for you guys. So. All right, thank you so much once again, student doctors Jordan and Charbel. And um, you. you guys um, came up with some a very novel idea. Right, Dr. Farouk, what would we say about this? He's already taken his, all of his exams, but if we had this in uh, our time. To be honest, uh, it's an amazing concept and you have blown me away. <laughs> I'll be honest about that. <laughs> Well, thank you. Yeah, we're, we're hoping it will be helpful. And it is, we're, the feedback we have so far is very positive, so. That's wonderful. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you.
So moving forward, for those of us who joined, um, we are so grateful that Novocards joined, explained their um, features for us. We're going to have Dr. Farouk briefly talk about XME Medical, which is another free institution that helps uh, a lot of IMGs. And then we will have the advisors from Resier answer any questions that you have for step one and step two. So Dr. Farouk, please. All right. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, Dr. Tevi, thank you for having me on your platform. It's always an amazing opportunity to talk with students. Jordan, Jordan and Charbel, thank you for sharing Nova cards with us. I, I'll be honest, I was very blown away. But on to uh, XME Medical. First, I'll introduce myself. My name is Dr. Hamza Farooq. I am an IMG student. I graduated in Pakistan from Dow International Medical College. Um, after that, I grew like I was raised here in Oregon. I went to Pakistan and then I came back. So that was a journey and everyone has their own life stories going on. So XME Medical was founded by me and another founder of mine, uh, Dr. Malik Mohsen Mushtaq, which he cannot join us today. But um, it started with us two in the beginning and it was normally we had only three people on recruits. And because of how studying was done in Pakistan, we wanted to change the game field. We wanted to change the playing field. I cannot tell you amount of numerous times we had professors come in and they did not lead us to a direct track or explain us about any certain concept. That was later when we found out that, oh, step two studying is also related to step one studying. You need to know your basic concepts before you get into the clinical aspects of anything. And what we found out was that there's always a reason, which Dr. Tabby will explain to you in later sessions. Of, uh, with USMLE and step one and step two as well. There's always a reason. So Dr. Mawson and me, we start out with simple things. We were like, all right, let's explain students about making, you know, lecture videos about one certain topic and we'll go from there. And later than you know, it blew up. So XME Medical is an all-in-one virtual healthcare platform designed for medical students and medical graduates for healthcare students and healthcare graduates. We are in uh, medical, we are in dentistry, we are in pharmaceuticals, we've done sessions throughout that. And despite that, um, after you know, a long time, we've had another co-founder that we had, Dr. Omar Islam, and we opened up our XME Medical Res Research Council of pa Pakistan, Research Community of Pakistan, sorry at EM Research Wing. And in that, we brought in two other mentors that have done 40 plus publications, and we were able to help students grant publications in different journals. Dr. Hamza, unfortunately, I think your program um, muted you. For some reason, the computer was like, stop talking. No, <laughs> please continue, please. <laughs> uh, where was I? Yes, EM Research Wing, we've uh, started that research program to help students grant publications because a lot of students are confused on where to get publications. How do we do that? So we've done live studios, live sessions. We've done podcast sessions um, to help other students that are, you know, in a, in the general world, what are they struggling with? You know, that they're not able to tell their parents that they're not able to tell other members throughout that. Cause as everyone is sitting here, they all know how much of a struggle it is being an IMG, especially when applying for residency that you can't discuss with other people. Right. So, um, recently what we did is we also got our hands into workshops. Um, which I'm very proud about. We brought in uh, emergency doctors from Australia. We brought in emergency doctors from US and we called it Rescued. So why Rescued, in fact, is Dr. Tabby, I have time, right? Yes, Did please go ahead. Them? I was going to actually pull up your poster on that. It was a wonderful workshop that you put together. Yes. Um, so let me actually bring this up. Let me share the screen and try not to show too much of my information from my platform because there are other projects developing. Can everyone see this? You guys yeah. can see this, right? All right, so Rescued, 
Uh, we it was a creative name that we brought up. It's called resuscitation of critical and unstable patients in emergency department. So we found rescue to be uh, you know very catchy in a prospect. And we brought in instructors, as you can see. Um, Dr. Rizwan Qureshi is an emergency doctor from Australia. He has his own platform and we were very lucky to work with him. So in that, we all talked about, you know, history taking examination skills. We got into team dynamics and lots of procedures and resuscitation skills. We did not want to do that online. We were like, all right, let's set up live classes. Let's see how it works, you know, how it goes. And, you know, um, I'm very glad we got great responses on that. Um, besides that, is that we've done a lot of sessions about USMLE and I'm um, sorry, I'm trying to close this page. Uh, there's too much going on here. <laughs> All right. I think it's closed, right? We still see it. Are you trying to close the screen share? Yeah, I'm trying to close the screen share. Here. Uh, all right, perfect. So besides that, um, you know, um, we're still continuing and uh, I'm very glad that we're about to launch our program in the United States. And that has been gone for a very long time. And for some reason, there we go. Yes, uh, we're trying to launch our program in the United States. I'm very happy about that. It's what I've been busy with. And my doors are always held, like open for, you know, step one, step two examinations. It's what I really do my podcast and live sessions about. I've done multiple of them. And so far, that's all I can talk about my platform. <laughs> it's still developing. It's still going. And I'm glad we have gotten a lot of people to join us, you know. Um, started with five people and now we're almost reaching a 200 limit. So that's been pretty, it's been an impressive journey so far. Thank you so all much right. for joining all of that, Dr. Farouk. Of course, it's always a pleasure to come and talk to medical students. I love it. It's what I do for a living now. <laughs> I don't get paid, but I'm glad I'm doing it for free. <laughs> Well, we are super fortunate uh, to have you here. So in case that you just joined, we were speaking to the co-founder of XME Medical, Dr. Hamza Farouk, who was a US IMG himself. And he grew up in Oregon and came up with this wonderful idea for um, students in Pakistan to have resources, which now has expanded to anybody who is online and they can use their resources. We will certainly share more information towards the end of our session. So a huge thank you to Dr. Farouk for taking time out for us this morning and explaining his platform. Of course, anytime. And Dr. Tabby, it's okay if I share my uh, links, right? In the comment section below? Please go ahead. And I will, um, in the presentation that we use, I will update your links and the links from Nova Cards so that everybody has access to that. So thank you. Of course. So with that, uh, for everybody who was waiting for the live Q and A, we will moving we'll move forward to that. Um, we had Nova Cards present about their presentation. If you missed it, we will have another session with them. We had Dr. Farouk talk about his wonderful platform that's helping a lot of students as absolutely free, which is what I like about Nova Cards and uh, XME Medical, um, and they both have strong social media platforms. I will share information for that. And moving on to the last part of today, the live Q&A with our advisors from Resie. So I will share the presentation that we're going to use. That way, no one has to worry about taking any notes. I know how it feels to be trying to get down all the important information. The presentation is on a Google document. You will have access to it anytime you like. But I really want us to use our time together, the hour that we have, just to talk about your concerns, if there are any techniques, all of the advisors will share theirs. But if you have any questions, please um, move forward with that. So give me a moment as I bring up our presentation and introduce the advisors that we have today. Now, this is the Resier um, presentation. Everybody can follow along as I introduce our advisors. 
All right. My screen has loaded. Okay. You know, this feature likes to play games with us every time I try it, but we'll try it one more time. Here we are. Okay. My, do my name is Dr. Fayez. Um, I am the person who's always messaging in the groups and bothering you guys. So now we know. Moving forward to why we started Resi Yay. As the name suggests, the last part, Yay, was to add a little bit of excitement to residency application because if you're not in it already, it can be really nerve wracking. However, it is a very wonderful process, um, but we're adding that little yay. Now to our wonderful advisors who took out time this morning just to address any concerns that you have. Let me briefly introduce everybody. So Dr. Buller, if you could give us a little um, wave so we know who you are. Okay, thank you, Dr. Tabby, for having me here. So my name is uh, Dr. Amanjot Buller. Most people call me by my nickname, Amen, which is the first four letters of my first name. I'm advisor for the Resier. So the school I went to, I went to St. George's University where I did my first two years of basic sciences on the beautiful island of Grenada in West in Caribbean. My other two years I did in, in the state of Florida and the state of New York City. My hobbies, I love watching SpongeBob SquarePants. I know you might guys think I'm a childless, but I love the show. I love drinking apple juice. PS is the best way to prevent COVID. I joined Regie as advisor because I always had a passion helping others succeed in medicine. My goal is to provide enough support so future applicants can pass the step one and also excel the step two CK. Exactly. Thank you so much, Dr. Buller. Dr. Chauhan, if you could give us a wave. Yes. Hi, everyone. This is Sabasum Chauhan. I'm also an advisor at uh, Regie. So I did my from uh, Russia to a state medical university, uh, but I am from India basically. I just did my medical from there. Um, and uh, I'm done with my USMLE step one, step two CK and step three as well. So if you guys have any questions, you can anytime approach me on the group. And uh, I joined Resige because this is the only, when you will start your residency application, you'll see that everything is just for the money. And this is the only platform I found out that, you know, it was helping people for the mock interviews and everything. So that's why I wanted to help people through it. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Shahan. Dr. Hussain. Dr. Hussein, if you could give us a wave. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Now you can hear me? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So my name is Sayyid Saddam Hussain, and uh, I graduated from Heber Medical College. Um, so now I have done my internship and also done my home country residency here in Pakistan, and I applied this year for a match. And, uh, you know, um, preparing for the step one and step two is really a difficult uh, task to do but we are here uh, for you to uh, answer those questions which are you are in mind and uh, you are struggling with those things and uh, I joined Rezia because uh, when I was uh, preparing for my interviews and I, I feel that it's very difficult to interview uh, to prepare for interview uh, which you haven't seen before so this Rezia helped me a lot and uh, I always have a passion for helping others. So that's why I joined Rezia. And uh, I am a dog lover, you know, I kind of, uh, you know, I love dogs. Like uh, I have a dog of mine, like Kang Shepherd. And also uh, I enjoy TV shows and movies. So any kind of help you need, uh, we are here uh, with Rezia. So that's me. Thank you, Dr. Hussain. Thank you. So we have Dr. Hector Pantaleon, last but not the least. Hi guys, I'm Hector Pantaleon. I'm from Dominican Republic. I graduated from medical school from Pontificia Universidad Católica Madre Maestra here in Dominican Republic. I decided to become a resident advisor because I did all this process alone, looking online for information. And I bumped residue when I was preparing for interviews. And I, I really liked the work that Tavi was doing at the time. And I decided to become, for others, the person I would like to have when I was preparing. 
uh, a hobby I have. Well, this is actually a fun fact. I want to have a farm some point in my life. So yeah, <laughs> that's me. Okay, thank you, Dr. Hector. So I will move us forward to our screens on step one. So we'll go ahead and get started from that. As you can see, there's a lot of information about the other aspects of US residency. But today we are here to focus on step one. So if anybody um, has any questions in the audience, we will try to uh, answer those. You are welcome to um, bring your questions live, meaning just turn on your mic and ask a question. We do appreciate that if you use the hand, the raise hand emoji, so we know that it's your turn to ask, or you can type your questions in the chat. And we have the rest of the 40 minutes just for that. I wanted to make sure that you guys have access, this live Q&A access. So while we're kind of warming our brains and figure out, okay, what questions do I want to ask? I will ask Dr. Chohan, since you have completed all three steps, for someone who's starting their journey, absolutely from step one, and who uh, obviously the information will build for all the way to step three, how would you suggest approaching step one? And how did you retain all the information that you learned over the years? So uh, step one was the most difficult part of the whole journey. That's what I felt uh, because I am very old graduate. So from starting from the scratch and uh, build your knowledge because I am from Russia and I did my medical school in Russian language. So that was a completely different journey for me. But for uh, I would say that if you are starting from the scratch and everything, uh, the boards and beyond pages are the really good step to start it. And uh, with the first aid um, annotation, like just start with the boards and beyond videos and then start writing it in the first aid as a notation. And uh, some people believe that you have to start your world after doing a note of, a, you know, after going through first aid and everything but in my opinion you have to start from the very first day you world and first aid will go hand in hand so you have idea that okay if i am doing this chapter from first aid how they can ask in you you know the questions are from you world so that is i think the best thing to start with and uh, you know you have time to uh, evaluate yourself with mbmes and uh, the further evaluations but uh, for me, first aid and UWorld was the best part. And someone is uh, in micro, sketchy micro, I used, and that was the best uh, resource for microbiology. And how did you retain all this information as you went through your steps? So uh, I did not use Anki, sorry. So that, uh, I never used any Anki deck, but I used to do, uh, at the end of the day, you have to revise your thing from first aid. That's what I was doing. Like. Uh, I did read first aid for at least 20 times, I would say, when I was doing my step one. So you have to go through, uh, if you're reading at least 20 pages a day, then you have to, in the end of the day, just, you know, give a glance over whatever you have read uh, on the same day. And uh, after a week or something, just go through again to the same topic. So that will, that's how you can retain yourself time to time if you go back to back and do revision so many times. Okay, so for Dr. Jahan, your uh, concept was simple. At the end of the day, whatever information you've collected throughout the day, you view it on a routine basis. Yeah. All right, so I will move now to Dr. Hussein, who also mentioned that it was a difficult journey for him. What was the most difficult part for you, Dr. Hussein, and how would you give advice to overcome that? Uh, yeah, Dr. Tabi, thank you. So uh, first I will say that uh, the step one was was back in, uh, I would say that before 2022, it was difficult, but now it's become, it has become very easy and you can easily ace on it. And uh, <clears throat> uh, you can save a lot of time by doing step one uh, very easily now. So the uh, difficulties which I faced that uh, I was building from my scratch and uh, everything was very new for me. Uh, and uh, I started from watching Kaplan videos like uh, back in 2014 and uh, uh, from the classroom videos and that gave me a lot of boost to build up my uh, uh, basic basic knowledge and after that I moved to the 
uh, uh, U World, and along with that, I did my step uh, the first aid step for step one. So that was my plan. But now I can say that the a lot of a lot of things are not meant to be uh, learned by heart because uh, you are going just only to pass it. And uh, the the only uh, thing I would suggest that uh, just uh, just like Dr. Tabassum uh, mentioned that you have to do like uh, BNB values, uh, which is uh, provided online or you can borrow from someone. And uh, the other things, uh, just just note down those things which don't you don't know about the, like uh, if you go to the, um, uh, go, for, go for first aid and you uh, give it a, um, a read for like uh, the, the chapter you are reading, like I would say that if we are going to study uh, CVS, you just give it a read, like just a glance in a two hours or one hour, after that, you start uh, 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 watching the videos from BNB. And after that, we watch the BNB, you uh, should switch to your study to you or like doing in a, a similar fashion uh, that you memorize the things in and uh, giving it a strong grip that will be maintained for your uh, long memory. So that's what uh, I recommend. But nowadays, it's very quite easy to uh, pass your step one. So the things, man, things I would suggest that uh, you do is the step one, uh, first aid, you world, and uh, that's all. Then you are passed. Okay, thank you for making it so simple for us, Dr. Jose. I hope it was that simple when I was going through it. I believe we do have a question. So we are doing MBBS from Pakistan and you're currently a third year medical student. How long should it take you to prepare for step one? All right. Um, Dr. Hussain, would you like to take that question since you did your school? So when you were a third year student in Pakistan, at that point, how long would it have taken you to take step one? Uh, yeah, I can comment on this because I had a similar situation. When I started uh, preparing for my uh, step one, um, but on, in our days, uh, like before 2022, it was a um, three-digit score, and it was very uh, we considered it very um, uh, achieving their, their goal, like going beyond 240, 250s, or 260s. Uh, everyone has different goal, but nowadays it become very simple for uh, passing step your simile step one. So, so as a third year student, you should uh, start from, you know, uh, uh, by studying here in Pakistan, we uh, study pharmacology, uh, microbiology, and also with that is we general, general pathology. So you can start from uh, BNB values along with that, along with that, the BNB notes, or you can study from Kaplan values, like you can say that uh, I would suggest like you pick up the books like Kaplan. Uh, a whole series of Kaplan books. So you can pick up from there and you start studying along with that. Just like me, uh, I have studied uh, those things like uh, uh, microbiology from Kaplan, uh, pharmacology from this, uh, from Kaplan and also, uh, but I did my general pathology from the uh, pathoma. So there's a, a little bit of difference in the hair. So uh, along with that, you start studying those things and by the end of uh, fourth year, when you uh, have done your uh, special pathology and also your community medicine, along with your biostatistics and epidemiology, you can take your step one exam. So I would suggest that uh, along those lines, along those guidelines, which you have put, uh, they have put there and uh, for you in the medical college that you have to achieve those goals, like uh, passing your, uh, your uh, professional exam. You, that, that will also help you in uh, passing your, your, your simile step one exam. So I would suggest uh, that uh, watch BNB videos or Kaplan videos along with Kaplan books uh, and Pathoma. So that will be the, uh, that will be the, for the third year. And the time, time is very, uh, you know, uh, time is very, uh, for everyone it's a different issue and every, everyone is preparing at a different pace. So I would suggest that by the, fourth year of your uh, medical school here in Pakistan, uh, you should be have done with your exam. Uh, when you, where, uh, wherever you started preparing your exams like in the uh, third year or in second year, but by fourth year, you have to, you should have done your exam. 
uh, and if you can do it early, so it's quite, uh, it will be, uh, you know, a bonus for you and it will be um, a, a very, a star in your, you know, uh, on the shoulder, so you can do it. Thank you so much for that very detailed answer. Now, you mentioned a few of the resources, Dr. Hussein. So I would like to ask um, Dr. Pentelion, how, did you use Boards and Beyond Kaplan, any of these resources? I did use the Boards and Beyond's video for review the, the topics that I already studied. My approach to the exam was I read the information from first aid and I start right away with you were Cubans. And I, for example, I read cardiology today or half of cardiology and I start doing cardiology. I study system, system wise. Some people prefer to study random. And I use Boards and Beyond at the end of my preparation to review the topics that I, that I study at the beginning of my preparation. It was kind of a passive way to study just sit in the computer and watch a video. That, that was my approach for the whole process. I, I try to keep narrow my sources so I can focus very well on them. Besides first aid, I use Patoma for pathology and also Patoma videos while I was doing pathology. And yeah, the, I use Bors and Beyond and you work and first aid, just that. All right, so so far the common theme is we're using Patoma for pathology. For microbiology, Dr. Jahan mentioned that she used um, the sketchy. And aside from that, if we are someone who's just starting step one, open up your first aid, um, briefly go over that section, and then immediately jump to practice questions. You world, as we understand, is the uh, best resource for questions. However, it is expensive. So if you are not able to get your hands on it, that's perfectly fine, but do yourself the favor of doing practice questions. Possibly you are someone who can read text and that's wonderful, but in order to do well on these exams, you have to practice questions. You can start off with a different resource um, and then move on to live questions later, but don't delay it. Now, as far as- yeah. Go yeah, ahead. there's something I, I would like to add. I think one of the basis of this preparation is starting early with the questions. That's why I decided to start as like I read a topic from first aid and I go straight to the questions for the same topic just to get used to the way you're going to be asked the information because the most of the times it's not a direct question. It's a question that have a multi-step and you have to know one thing to get to the actual thing that they're asking you. So that's the best way to, to do it. Like try to start early, find, find a way. I know there is not always a, a affordable to, to buy the Q bank, uh, but there are ways to, to, to do questions. Yeah, Dr. Avi, I can add something. So if, if you are not able to, uh, you know, the, you can't afford the UVR and uh, you are going to, to, to financial issues. So I'm not going to suggest this one, but uh, uh, as you know, uh, uh, a lot of resources there are present on the internet and you can find uh, if there is, uh, you know, online UVR or something like that, you can find along with your study. Uh, so that will give you uh, some kind of, you know, uh, insight into the, uh, you world and after that you can you can start studying with uh, uh, online you world if you want to be absolutely agree with dr hussein and dr pentelion get your hands on practice questions as soon as you can and i will address the next question and then we will move on to another important concept that dr pentelion brought up when you are studying do i do a system-wise approach or do i do a random approach i think that's a very important question that we will discuss. Uh, prior to that, I have a question from Nabira that if um, you're not able to clear step one or you're not confident, how does that affect your journey in the future? So Nabira, um, I am someone, my background is that I did my education from elementary school in the US to the beginning of my medical school here. And then I finished my medical school in the Caribbean, which is still in the American system clinicals. 
I'm giving you this background that when I tell you how does it affect your journey, one thing it will do is that if you have not taken step one, it will limit your US clinical experience opportunities. It will not eliminate them, does not mean you will not have an opportunity, but a lot of the US clinical experience opportunities require that you clear step one, now that it is pass fail, especially. So it could potentially delay your plans. The next thing is, if you have not taken step one, highly encourage you to not move forward step two. A lot of people, when they graduate from clinicals, they're under the assumption that I can go ahead and attempt step two because it's clinical knowledge. I just finished medical school, the clinical side. I'm aware. But a lot of step one information is on step two. So if I were to give you a shorter answer, the more you delay step one, the more you will have to go back and regain that basic science information, and the more it could uh, possibly push your U.S. journey further than you initially planned. So on this topic, Dr. Buller, who graduated from the Caribbean, how much of step one information do you think there was on your step two? So thank you, Dr. Tabby. Okay, that's a really good question. So when I studied for step two, I found out the majority of my step two CK was step one material. It's just different type of questions. So like for step, when we're learning about the pathophysiology of the disease, that was step one. For where we they will test us on diagnosis, but there were also diagnosis questions on my step to CK. So that was similar, just different vignettes and different way of explaining it. Also, like step two had more treatment wise, but when you learned about when we when I learned in step one, when I was studying for step one, I found out that many medications were used to treat disorders, and those same medications came for my step two. So personally, like if the advice I can give is like when you finish step one, if you already finished four years of medical school and you wrote step one, it's best to take step two soon after because that half of the material is just very refreshed in your mind. So you can do better on step two CK as we know the step two CK will be very important in match these days. Absolutely. So we have two points to consider. Um, I'll get to the next question. Soon we're going to talk about should you cover the information in a system wise or random and how important has step two become in the residency process, which we are all facing because we are all US residency applicants right now. But before that, we have a question about, are all medical students from all over the world and universities allowed to take the test or are there some conditions to take? So to answer this question, to my knowledge, it does depend in the future, I believe 2024, when there are more guidelines came out that your university has to be registered in a certain way for you to attempt step one. Um, now, if you give me the name of your university, then I can offer more information. Um, but let us go to this one. Um, Dr. Chohan, we have kept you quiet for a little bit. When you were studying for step uh, one, did you do a system-wise or a random approach? Two questions. Yeah, I, did, uh, I did system-wise first because uh, that way I was able to do all the topics, you know, covered all the topics. And then the second pass I did was random. So I did, uh, actually I did work three times, but uh, first time was uh, uh, system wise and then I went with the random questions that was my approach and but for step two CK I you know I started with random approach as well you know I did not do system wise for step two CK but in step one I did system wise and what does it mean Dr. Shahan what does it mean to be system wise or random uh, like when you make a question bank, like when you uh, create a block in UWorld, so you have to just uh, select one system, like if you are doing cardiology, and then you can go for everything like physiology, anatomy, and uh, biochemistry, everything from cardio, and then from renal or from respiratory or that, and then you have to read that portion from the first bit as well. So that was my approach. And uh, you can search some questions as well uh, when you are reading first aid. You can just uh, search the topic in UWorld and then you can have the questions that how can questions come up in exam from the same topic. Okay, thank you so much for sharing that. So um, on the following note of that, um, Dr. Pantelion, how important do you think step two has become now that step one is pass fail?
I think it's a step two took the place that step one has when uh, when the residency programs were looking for applicants. Now I think the the greater step two is going to be considered to filter out applicants at, are the when the moment to application comes that the the past years it was step one. I absolutely agree with that because now that we no longer have a digit on step one, step two has become more important. Okay. On that note, Dr. Hussain, we will move forward to step two with you. When you studied for step two, any tips that you would offer from someone who's already taken step one? Yeah, I have recently uh, took my step two, like in uh, August 2022, and I have you know, uh, I have a great score. Uh, so uh, I think uh, uh, the main resources which I used uh, for the uh, UCMLE step two is uh, U World. Uh, I have done two times U World along with Emboss, some kind, some 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 uh, systems from the U World uh, from the Emboss. So. <clears throat> Uh, my my suggestion is that first you go to to, to do uh, your step one to build up some basic knowledge and on that you can do a very a real good score uh, on step two. So what I would suggest that you should do uh, system wise if if you have haven't done if you haven't done your step one, so you should do a uh, USMLE step two for you world like uh, you can do it in a systemic wise and then you can switch into a random wise. But uh, if you haven't done, uh, uh, if you haven't done, if you haven't done your, um, you know, I, what, what should I say? Like step one, uh, you you should do like this. If you have have done your step one, so you should directly switch to your random, uh, uh, random, uh, random mode. And random mode will give you this opportunity to to save your time and also learn a lot of things in a very short short a short interval. And give you the this opportunity that uh, you interact with other things like you have done in step one and uh, come up with an ideas which you will make your score better. What I would suggest, like you do a quick review from BNB. If you have done your step one, you can uh, give a quick review from BNB. Like uh, you can only watch those videos and then switch to U World. Along with that, I would suggest that you should uh, do a social sciences and biostatistics from the Emboss. Uh, which will ha really help you on the uh, you know uh, step two exam because ethics and uh, social sciences are very heavily tested nowadays uh, on similarly st step two and that's gonna make uh, you know uh, a real difference between two individuals like you are going from uh, 240s to 260s so that will give you that edge uh, uh, like doing a lot of social sciences mcqs and uh, the other thing I would mention that if it's like uh, you do uh, the drug aid questions like biostatistic questions. So if you have, uh, you know, they, they provide this opportunity, like you, you print out those, um, you know, the, the, the biostatistics uh, part of yourself. And uh, because I, for me, uh, the hard paper works really good because I can learn from paper very good and uh, there's give me that confidence uh, uh, to buy uh, SING and two by statistics. So print out those paper, uh, print out the things which you wanna uh, learn when by statistics. So print out and uh, discuss it with your friends because if you have a friend or you have a colleague which who can, uh, you can, uh, you know, um, um, uh, sit down and discuss those things because I have, I was weak on the by statistics and uh, I discussed it with my friends and we came up with really good ideas. And we, uh, after that, I uh, did a very, uh, really a good score on the biostatistics. So from, for, from my part, uh, the other sources along with you world, you should do uh, by um, social sciences and uh, biostatistics from the EMBOS along with their biostat uh, biostatistics from the U world, uh, like, you know, biostatistic review and you can print it out. Uh, and uh, the other thing you can use, uh, uh, like the flashcards on the U World, which is very, really good and on the U World, because uh, I didn't use Anki. Anki is a kind of, you know, uh, uh, kind of a little bit hazy and does not work for me. Uh, so I made my flashcards on the U World, and the U World was uh, what I did. 
as I uh, uh, I did just uh, copy or uh, or made a flashcard of that thing, that sentence, which I didn't know about uh, that that uh, that question. And I would on the front page, I would write uh, uh, what I did, uh, what I miss, and then the. Uh, um, back page, I would write those things, those uh, content which I I have to learn. So uh, after time, after some time, I uh, got to revise those flashcards. And if I didn't get the uh, the things on the uh, the and the revise and the revision, and revision, so after that I would mark as an, a red star or a yellow star. And after that, when I did my all flashcards, I I came back to the red. Uh, start flashcards, which I have mentioned for myself. So that really helped build my uh, my uh, clinical knowledge into basic knowledge, and that really gave me the confidence to ask and my uh, USML step one, step two exam. Thank you so much for sharing that, Dr. Hussain. I'm briefly going to summarize everything you just spoke about because if I was someone attempting step two, these are very important concepts and they're simple. First, I recently took my step two in September, so just a month after Dr. Hussain. I will suggest, guys, that you follow some of these tips. They helped me increase my score from step one to step two with 26 points, which was a very pleasant jump for me, but it was not easy. What I changed is exactly everything that you see on the slide. And going back from to Dr. Hussain, some of his points, if you are someone who does not like Anki, that's perfectly fine. I was someone, I used Anki to make my own cards. I did not use one of the big decks because I like a comprehensive approach. And sometimes I become very dedicated to cards that are not the highest yield. So I know myself. I made cards on things that I missed. I made my own simple, very quick Anki card. And I used to also keep a journal. So a lot of people say that keep a book on the side that you simply write the topic, cardiovascular, renal, whatever it is, and the concept that you missed, write the concept, write the wrong answer, and then write the right answer. For example, ascites in X condition happens because of this. So write the wrong answer that you thought was right, then write the right answer. This helps you go back and correct your thought process because sometimes we feel like, Ascites is this, and we've just memorized that from school. To break that cycle, you need to tell your brain, this is what I'm thinking, but this is what's right. So I would always keep both of those answers next to each other, and that really helped my thought process. The number two thing is as you're studying, obviously, how do you annotate? So here, the slide in front of you with presentation that we handed out, it says annotate in notes. It's hyperlinked to a set of notes that were made. You're welcome to open those notes. It's about 340 pages and annotate in that. Unfortunately for step two, first aid and some of the other books were not as reliable as they are for step one. So you are left with either using pre-made notes or um, using the charts. You just have to uh, fumble with what's best for you. The other point that Dr. Hossein made is the different colors. Um, you don't see it on this slide, but I updated on the presentation. And let me share the presentation one more time. Uh, I believe we've had new users since then. So you know what I'm talking about. Um, here we go. Okay. So you annotate on these notes if you like. You annotate on charts, however is helpful. But I wanted to point out a couple of things that are unique to step two. For step two, you really have to know your biostats, your bioethics, and your risk factors. Now for risk factors, screening, vaccination, as you can see under free resources on this slide, there's already a Google document that, has made, that was made for that. You just have to simply go through it. For biostats, the resources are listed. On the updated slide that you will see, there will be resources for the ethics portion. So Dr. Hussein mentioned that he used the UWorld part and uh, our AMBOS articles. The AMBOS articles are also listed. One thing that really helped me, I went to the newest version of First Aid. I printed out the pages that were dedicated to uh, ethics. And then I used, I wrote my notes on those pages. So I'm a writer. 
If you're someone who likes to annotate on PDF, you can do that. So again, go back to the newest first aid, um, use all of those pages for ethics and biostats, and then just use that for step two. So th those were some tips that really helped me. Now I would like to ask Dr. Chohan, any tips that helped you for step two? So for me, uh, I made my own note uh, that is called OneNote in uh, Microsoft. Uh, I'm not sure, <laughs> but I uh, I was taking all the UL uh, tables and uh, I uh, gathered all of them in that one note and I used to revise them again and again because as you said that there is no work like not first aid not master the board or I had everything but uh, not no like no books helped me so it was just UL and uh, some topics of first aid you have to revise before going for exam like immuno and um, some portions of biostatistics from the first aid portion. Other than that, UWorld is and embossed questions would be the most uh, efficient for step to CK preparation. And uh, if you can make your own notes, that would I would advise because not for everyone, each topic is not their weakness. So whatever is your weakness, just focus on that thing. Uh, and if you have done with your step one, then I think step two will be more easier to All right, I think Dr. Chahan is- Yeah, I think we lost her. She'll be back, guys. So briefly, we don't wanna keep on the same yep. thing. We understand how it is when you're in this process. Um, all of your resources are on the screen in front of you. The part that Sorry, says- you know, got froze. <laughs> Oh, okay, I think we have her back. Any last um, pieces of information, Dr. Chahan? No, that's what I was saying. That U world and emboss, you just have to focus on some portions of U world, uh, uh, like emboss, and U world is the best resource for step to CK. Absolutely and agree. As you mentioned, that uh, I also jumped from step one to step two is almost twenty five points. So just focus on your weak areas. That was I did not do in my step one, and uh, that would give you more points. And one thing that really helped me, guys, for to make that jump. Um, so my study plan is the one that's hyperlinked. Um, I made this resource for my school. We're a Caribbean school, so um, we need the same guidance, just like the other IMGs. What really helped me is that I did two months of dedicated. In my second month of dedicated, when I felt like I was weak in an area, like cardiovascular was something that was challenging for me. I was set out four days for cardiovascular. I never did an entire week of the same topic because it gets tiring <laughs> the best way my mind just like oh my gosh I cannot take any more information for cardio I see Dr. Hector laughing <laughs> so that is a common weak point for uh, I do it's I do the same like I try not to spend more than three days in a topic because I don't want to study anymore if, if I will like I, I don't know it's frustrating <laughs> I, I feel yeah exactly yeah. Yeah, exactly the same thing. If you if you made a, a plan for yourself and you study for like a cardio for four four days and then you switch to uh, like uh, pulmonology or GI, and if you don't know something like for example, if I don't know a heart failure on uh, cardiovascular diseases, so you should uh, take down that thing that I I have problems. I, it's a difficult for me. Uh, like uh, heart failure is difficult for me. You should take down that note, and uh, after going uh, giving it a single read, uh, uh, so, so switch to another topic like doing MI or anything else, anything else. And after a few days, came back to that thing, you will see things differently in a different uh, uh, environment from di different perspective. You will keep learning things from different perspectives. So, if if you are not learning uh, the one thing in a one go. So just re keep revising those things and it will come, ultimately it will come to you. The other thing I would uh, like to add here that um, in step two, uh, we are very struggling with, uh, you know, this uh, preventive medicine and it's heavily tested. Like for example, when is the screening done and when a, a, at what age and uh, for, for what kind of age. And uh, like, for example, uh, for depression, what kind of uh, when we do the screening tests? 
So um, this was difficult for me, but then I find a, a solution for that. I go to this you know, website, uh, United States uh, Task Forces in Preventive Medicine. So I, go, uh, I got there and uh, I uh, downloaded a four pages uh, PDF over here, over there. And uh, 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 there was a lot of, you know, uh, a lot of the whole, the whole screening, the whole screening uh, um, uh, table was there. And I just read from there and I just learned from there. So there is the, another point you can uh, pick up from there and uh, just print out these four pages. It will help you a lot. So that's the another thing I, I want to add it. Thank you so much for adding that, Dr. Hussain. So that was the inspiration behind the Google Doc that we see here. It's point four under free resources. That document has those um, screenings. So I took them straight from the USPSTF website, the very long acronym, um, because I was so, I'm someone who likes to study everything together. I'm not someone who can do bits and pieces. So we put it all together. A lot of people came together. And then there's NBME vocabulary. So the other <laughs> thing that you have to familiarize with yourself in some form is going to say Wegner's disease. Another form is going to say the new name of it now. So those of us who learned as Wegner's now has to familiarize himself with the new name. So this document also talks about alternative NBME vocabulary. And I see that questions are piling up and I promise we will get to them as soon as possible. One thing I wanted to suggest guys, another um, very helpful tip for me, how I organize my weeks, and I would love for the advisors to jump in, um, biostats and ethics can be kind of difficult to learn when you have big topics like cardiovascular and respiratory. So how do I bring that into my week? What I used to do is dedicate half of my day on Thursdays to biostats. It's a random to pick any day and half of my day on Fridays to ethics. So I forced myself to spend half of a day on these topics every single week. And at the end of the week on Saturdays, I would take a practice um, CK assessment from NBME. It's about $60 US dollars comes with explanations. So this was in my last month of dedicated every single Saturday I took an assessment and then I would review I would make Anki on my wrongs or write them down in my journal. Monday, start a new topic. That Saturday, do another assessment. So keeping those assessments back to back. One, if familiarize myself with NBME style of questions, because NBME is the one that writes step two. Also, it was a different set of practice questions than UWorld or AMBOSS. So it gave me more exposure. So I'd highly suggest now, if you're kind of like, okay, what is Dr. Tab you talking about? This entire study plan is outlined under free resources. So you can go back and refer to that. And now, as I promised, we'll get to the questions. So we make sure that we address everything. Um, starting with the 2024 regulations, um, Dr. Hamid, if you would please give me a message at my number, I will drop it below. Let me get you more information on that because it is school specific. Um, then we already covered how to retain information if you use, should use tables or not. Um, the best way to use pre-made decks for step one. Um, okay, advisors, who use Anki and who suggests a deck for step one? Okay, Hector. I tried Anki and what discouraged me through using it was the process of looking for the uh, for the for the information that I was studying at the moment because I like to study system wise and Anke is a good source to keep remembering things and bringing back information that that you already studied I think Anke is more for review than for doing the big bulk of studying information that you need for step one that I think that my approach to Anki it was to review. I, I don't count Anki as a, as a study source per se. Now, was that, An, uh, so Anne King, the big deck, is that the deck that you used? Yeah, same, that deck. Okay, all right, so that is. Um, and I a, think that, the, that, I think that the tool that was uh, shared at the beginning of this presentation, uh, the Nova card, it's very useful because 
what it discouraged me back then was that you have to look for the for the cards that you need you have to suspend and you have to keep this suspending and unsuspending process going on and this this thing this i i think they share with us it's it's impressive <laughs> It is very impressive. So if you missed that part of the presentation, we will, uh, this presentation is recorded. So we will release the recording. If you don't know where to find it, uh, please find your way to our WhatsApp groups. I will drop my details below so you can join our WhatsApp groups, which the benefit of doing that is everybody who was here, the whom you spoke to, plus 26 other advisors are on the WhatsApp groups, in the groups, you are welcome to post any question, just like you're doing in the chat today, and we will get back to you. So this, it's a free resource. Um, you have seniors there who are from all walks of life, as you saw today, Russia, Pakistan, Dominican Republic, um, Egypt, um, Sudan, so that you will find someone that you can connect with, so you can get advice there. And we'll try to get through the rest of the questions that we had. Um, step one preparation. So we have a slide prepared for that. It's before the step one. Um, and the slide, yes, this one. And this presentation is free to all. I will share the links one more, once more. Um, but the best way is please get a hold of us on WhatsApp or follow us on Instagram so that you can request anything that you need. For step two, what was helpful for me at Anki Deck was Zanki. Zanki is nice because you can sort out whichever topics you wanted. But again, um, if you're not dedicated to Anki decks, that's fine. You can always make your own. Little bits of information are okay, but it's more important that you go over it more and more. Not that you have a huge deck and you never have an opportunity to complete it. All right. For step one, is it concept-based and are MBBS books enough? I uh, don't know about you or other materials. Uh, Dr. Hussein, if you could help us with that one. Um, for step one, were your MBBS books enough for you? Uh, yeah, so uh, if you can give me, uh, you know, uh, the year of your uh, in which you, you are studying. So I will be uh, exactly tell you uh, what to do and how to follow those things. <clears throat> so if, if you are studying MBBS, MBBS, we here in Pakistan, we um, study uh, in our most of the medical school, we study like regional, regional things, like we do regional anatomy, regional physiology. But in some of your, our medical school, um, we follow a modular system like we do uh, human physiology with human anatomy, human uh, uh, medicine, uh, some things from e each subject, like, uh, like in Aga Khan University, uh, these people are doing a modular system. So if you are studying for MBBS and uh, you're also uh, preparing for step one, so the, the, the course is the same. You are at the same time you are studying for uh, step one. But the other thing I would like to add is this, we are studying a lot of things which are not tested on, on our step one. And uh, there's are the things which should be emitted along the course you are doing MBBS. So uh, what I should suggest that you should pick up the books which are specially prepared for the uh, USMLE exams. Like you can uh, pick up the Kaplan uh, series. Uh, yeah, or you, if you are studying uh, in third year, fourth year, you can, pick up the pathoma for pathology, uh, the books like those one will uh, uh, direct you to the specific uh, kind of information you, uh, that is needed for you. And uh, the other thing which will also help you in your professional exam, but uh, the most of the thing which we learn in our medical school from anatomy, physiology, or other things like pharmacology is a, just a waste of time and you are giving more, much more time than that is uh, needed for the USMLE step one. So I would suggest that follow those books other than um, uh, following your books like for uh, MBBS. So that will be uh, really handful for you. 
Thank you so much for that. So just a notice to everyone, we are going to wrap it up in 10 minutes. Well, we have been more than happy to be here for about an hour and a half. So we'll try to get through as many questions as we can. If there are leftover questions, please find yourself to the chat and the Zoom. I dropped the WhatsApp community link. This is our community page and an Instagram page. Let me briefly talk about how we have set up the community pages. Um, so Dr. Hector, I will take over the screen share. And um, brag a little bit about all the wonderful advisors that are on the platform and how is it that we're able to give you free feedback, free feedback, funny word to say. When, as that opens up. Um, yes, uh, Dr. Hamid, if you follow the WhatsApp community, then I am an admin on that and you will find my direct number through that. Anytime I have to share my WhatsApp, it takes longer than when I'm just using it on the side. And guys, also the feedback form is also in the chat. I'll share it again. I highly suggest that you give us feedback so that we know in the future um, what you need. And I can bring um, other people who are doing the same work for free. Um, this is already a very expensive journey. And we want to make sure that we're getting quality resources and that they're accessible to all. All right, so let us explore that. Okay. Give me one moment, guys. Here we go. So it might look a little funky, but this is the WhatsApp community page. Uh, we drop all the announcements. But what is the nice feature of this is when you click on the name, it'll talk to you about 13 groups that we have open at the time. And the groups are all described here. So we have our group for residency one and two. What that means is, is everybody who's applying for residency, it's a general group, regardless of your specialty. So you can get the same information. Um, we do the free mocks, but at any time someone is available for a mock, they can post and other people will say, okay, let's go ahead and do our session one-on-one. -on -one. Then we have US clinical experience advice, um, seniors here to guide you. If there are different processes from your country, um, then USMLE CK, then we have some of the groups dedicated to match. So neurology match, psychiatry, pediatrics, family medicine. Internal medicine, I did not make a group because most everybody tends to be internal medicine. So um, these groups one and two, we just keep those for internal medicine. And then we also have research advice and step one and three. So all of the wonderful advisors that you met here and everybody else, they are the ones in those step one, two, and three groups. And they're there to help you. And we'll try to get to the um, other questions. Do we need to include AMBOSS for step two prep? All right, uh, Dr. Buller, I've kept you quiet for a while. What would you say for that? Okay, thank you, Dr. Tabby. Um, that's a good question. So for me, I never did any AMBOSS for my step two CK study. But I feel like writing after, after writing the exam, I found like I should have did some AMBOSS questions, especially on the biostatistic ethics and public safety topic, because those are really good questions from AMBOSS and they can really help for step two. Okay, great, thank you. All right, I think we're going to pretty much wrap it up here. Um, again, please give us any feedback that we need um, and then join the groups. Last question, how important is research to get into a good residency program and how to start research from scratch? All right, um, Ramin, for that, research is important. I cannot give you more information on this as to how important this is important because I don't know which specialty you're applying for. 
and I don't know the rest of your CV. As to where to start research from scratch, I'd invite you to come to our uh, WhatsApp groups, free to join. I have advisors on that group that are from all kinds of unique backgrounds. And we have a written um, guide already that walks you through how to reach out to people. So please try to connect with us there and I'll certainly get you the information that you need. All right, guys, I think we're gonna wrap it up here. Um, any last words from our advisors? So I would just suggest that persistence is the key for step, any, any US in step, just keep going. And uh, if I can do it, anyone in this group can do any step. Because for me, I'm very old graduate. I have two kids with them. And when I took my step to CK, my son was only three months old. So if I can do it, anyone can. Just go for it and keep doing what you guys are doing and you will achieve it at the end. Thank you guys. Yeah, I would, like I would second. Yeah, no. go, ahead, go ahead. Okay. okay. I would like to say like I, I started studying for steps when I, after three years from graduating and it was, you're gonna fail the questions at the beginning, that, that's for sure. And remember, it's a learning process. You don't have to get the questions right. You have to know why you get it wrong and, and, and learn from that. Like it's, it's, a, it's a long process. Don't get discouraged by wrong question or by you feel like you don't understand what you're doing because you're learning. You don't have to know exactly what is happening. You have to learn what is happening. Yeah, I would second Dr. Tobasum. Uh, the basic thing uh, you uh, need is to understand the things very clearly. Don't go for the uh, quantity, go for the quality. Uh, keep your resources very small, like for first aid and U World and uh, uh, like Patoma and four or five, uh, like four or five things. And the, in the last, um, uh, I would suggest that you should only distract yourself into uh, uh, to the first aid. First aid should be the Bible for step one. And for the step two, I would suggest that the UL is enough. If you are aiming for like 260s, you can easily get to uh, by doing only the uh, UL. It's an easy process. But the uh, as, I, as Dr. Tabassum said, that the perseverance and the dedication is the main thing you can get. So uh, I would suggest that uh, keep doing good things and uh, the, the reward is very good at the end. We, we are going through this process, but ultimately you will find uh, the, these difficulties very comfortable when you reach your, your goal. So I wish you the best of luck. Thanks so much. Alrighty, thank you guys. Thank you everyone for joining. A last question about research. Yes, focus on step one and two. If you can get in case studies, which means if you find an interesting patient on your rotations and you want to do a brief write-up, that'll certainly help you. And for more, please join us. We have four more sessions in this series. I will announce those sessions, all that information, and that we hope to see more of you guys. And I will release the link to the recording soon. Take care, everyone.